This is the first integrable probability seminar um, at Columbia for the semester. And we should be meeting around the same time this semester, but every three weeks. So just check the, uh, you know, check the probability online uh, seminar list and you should be able to see it. It's also on researchseminars.org. So that's another place you can check. Um, okay, so today uh, we're happy to have Leonid Petrov from University of Virginia starting off the seminar and he'll be talking about random polymers and symmetric functions. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, probabilistic models pretty briefly. I'm going to survey um, several models and uh, not going to tell much about them, just say, well, they are integrable, which means something precise. And I'm going to comment on what, what it means. Um, and then I'm going to switch to describing uh, new symmetric functions, which are spin Whitaker symmetric functions. And they have um, direct connections to these probability models. And so I'm going to basically uh, explain this connection later. Um, this connection can be made in se on several levels, and I'm going to explain um, at least some some of the pieces that you need to make it, to make this connection. So one of the uh, so the first model I'm going to be um, discussing is the street weak uh, beta polymer introduced by Guillaume Barakan, uh, Ivan Corwin, um, in um, five years ago, uh, five and a half years ago. And it goes as follows. So, so um, your um, random polymers are basically, uh, so, so it's a directed random polymer model where you're looking at all possible, um, all possible paths from, in this case, uh, on this strict weak lattice from, from the bottom line uh, to, to your point ij. So it's a point to line polymer. And then uh, the weight of each wedge is determined by independent beta random variables where uh, where you have so you for for each for each point for each lattice vertex you you sample a single beta random variable and then you distribute its weight weight uh, you put beta you put it uh, the, the weight beta to the vertical edge and one minus beta to the diagonal edge and uh, you're also using some parameters uh, which is important for symmetric functions but for the model, you can think that there are no, no different parameters, but all the parameters are the same. And uh, so you sample some uh, BIJs, independent beta random variables. Beta random variable is a random variable from zero to one, which has a density uh, proportional to uh, t to the x minus one, one minus t to the y minus one. So it's, it's, it's a product of two uh, powers, and then it integrates to the beta function from zero to one. And so, beta and one minus beta are both uh, quantities from, from, from zero to one. So you put these weights and then the, the beta polymer partition function z of ij is going to be the sum over all paths from, 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 well, from the line actually, I don't have to take, so I can take like from, from, the, from the line to, to your, to your uh, vertex. And uh, the weight of a path is, 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 uh, is the product of, of weights of all edges. So, Z is a big sum of dependent, of products of dependent uh, beta random variables. And uh, it's uh, because of, because of the, because my initial values on this green line are, are all equal to one, then uh, it's easy to check that, that the whole, like the, the Z is equal to one in the full region here. And then it's, it's non-trivial only above the main diagonal. Uh, well, that's that's not uh, it's not too important. Um, what's important is that well, this model is integrable, uh, and um, it, it's uh, it's within the KPZ universality class. And it it, it also so so here I'm listing some properties of this model. Um, so it's uh, it's a model which uh, they defined as a as a Q goes to one limit of a certain particle system, which I'm not going to say anything about. But everything I, I'm, I'm saying it has a Q deformation. 
uh, which I'm going to ignore. I'm going to focus on the on the polymer level only. And it's integrable in, in the sense that, uh, well, in several senses, but basically it has connections to beta ansatz uh, and the certain certain um, Markov transition matrices can be diagonalized using coordinate beta ansatz, which allows to compute uh, moments of, so the zij is a random variable, is a polymer partition function to any power. You can compute them via duality and the uh, coordinate beta ansatz, and then can take the generating function of these moments and, and uh, get the Laplace transform of, of, of the one point distribution. And the Laplace transform has a also explicit form uh, related to, uh, well, expressed as a Fredholm determinant. This allows to compute, uh, this, this allows to prove KPZ asymptotics like Z of, zoom in, so Z of um, N comma alpha N scales uh, with N linearly and then has fluctuations on the scale N to the one third governed by the uh, tracy widom distribution, tracy widom GU distribution. So it's standard, standard one point behavior, which you expect from from, from the model. And also this, this uh, strict weak beta polymer has a very nice interpretation uh, in terms of, in terms of the uh, random walk and random environment. So instead, so, so this, this interpretation stems from the, stems from basically looking at uh, this random recursion. So this random recursion is, if you, if you treat these BIJs as environment, then this random recursion would be the same as the recursion for harmonic functions with respect to random walk living in this random environment. So it means that you look at you look at a point and then you look at uh, how z changes, how z is here is determined by z uh, at the neighbors uh, down, uh, neighbors below it. And you can also write the same recursion is satisfied by, by probabilities um, related to probabilities related to a C, which where C is a random walk in the random environment, and the random environment has beta um, beta probabilities. So at every point, at every space-time point, you sample a new beta distribution, and then with probability beta you go up, and then with probability one minus beta you go down. So you get a random walk in the random environment. And this works best if you have if you have these uh, parameters fixed, and um, and then 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 you have two randomnesses. So you have the environment and you have the random walk on top of it, and um, z is a random variable that depends on the environment but not on the random walk. So so this probability is uh, is average with respect to the random walk, um, and so. Right, quenched for every for every fixed environment, you have a probability that itself depends on the environment, and this is this is precisely the beta polymer partition function, and the asymptotics of the but KPZ asymptotics of the of the beta polymer are the same as as the asymptotics of the of the quenched probabilities in the large deviation regime, where where your random walk normally on average it would go it would go. Um, it would go, it doesn't go straight, it goes, it, it goes linearly in one direction, but these probabilities then you scale so that, so that the random walk requires to go, like these probabilities are going to be exponentially small. They, they, they ask for random walk to go asymptotically in the other direction, as opposed to this um, normal average direction we go to. So anyway, so there is, there is this nice connection, which I'm not going to say much about. Um, but this makes this particular model pretty interesting. So, um, so how does how do, how do exact formulas look like? Well, here is here is a sample here is a sample formula for for the expectation of a power where I put all the different parameters already. So, so z's are integration variables, and then x's and y's are parameters, and then um, you have the contours which are nested around the parameters. All right, so so using this uh, and putting these uh, in a in a so all the all these z's are are between zero and one, which means that these moments determine the distribution, and then you can also you can also compute the Laplace transform uh, by by just saying that well it's it's a sum over 
over k of, well, minus q to the k or k factorial times the expectation of zk. And this, this interchange is valid because, um, because all the z's are between 0 and 1. So that's, that's another good property of this polymer. OK, uh, so I'm going to move on to next models. Uh, one, of the, one of the models uh, which you can get from the beta polymer is, is you can take the S parameters. So, so let, let, let us now look closer at the, at the parameterization of the beta. So, the, so, so, so these my parameters, they have these, um, well, they, they have these x, x, um, x, xi, yj. So these are, these are xi, xi parameters, yj parameters. So xi, yj, and then yj here. So they go to gamma xi, yj. So there is, an, there, is a, there is an overall parameter s, which is a positive number, positive real number. And then there are these, these multi-parameters xi, yj. And um, when I let s go to infinity and, and scale my beta distributions, then I get gamma distributions. And so in this limit, um, in this limit, all the polymers just turn into turn into strict, stay on the same lattice, but the weights are rescaled. And um, the thing is that here, the vertical weight, which was beta, now gets rescaled to one, and, and the diagonal weight is going to be rescaled to, um, it's going to be rescaled to gamma. Uh, Makes sense. Well, um, or maybe the other way. I'm not sure. So uh, one of the weights is going to be one, and I want this one to be one, and this one uh, will be will be uh, independent gamma distributions. And uh, this model also has the same the same asymptotic behavior. Well, the same type of asymptotic behavior. The constants are going to be different. And uh, you probably lose the connection with random walks, but right. Um, but 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 you also get contour integrals, duality, KPZ uh, tracing with them asymptotics, and um, for the for the gamma polymer for this for the strictly gamma polymer, uh, there is a way to so there is there is something that appears at this level which is not present yet in the beta level is this uh, integrability via Whittaker functions. So Whittaker functions are certain pretty well studied uh, symmetric functions which depend on real parameters so these are not usual symmetric functions that people see in um, metrics like those are indexed by partitions but now these are indexed by real tuples and uh, depend on real variables and symmetric and so there is a connection between gamma between this polymer and NGL and Whittaker functions that you discover at the gamma level, um, and uh, the same connection, the same, the same, the same Whittaker functions, they also allow to solve the square version, square lattice version of the uh, gamma polymer, which was introduced a while before the beta polymer and the street weak gamma polymer, and this is the uh, square lattice log gamma polymer, which is another model of polymers. Um, I, I hope many people have seen it too. And um, uh, this low gamma polymer has, it's, it's more symmetric. It has uh, weights which are put on sites and uh, it's gamma inverse density, which means that it's one, divide, one divided by the gamma. And uh, it has the, has this PDF and these are called log gamma or inverse gamma random variables depending on the uh, depending on the who's 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 saying this and uh, it was introduced by Timo Sapolainen and it's the first uh, discrete integrable polymer uh, for first discrete polymer model that that is directed and exactly solvable and um, it also it also discretizes the Connell Yar polymer, which which uses Brownian motions along one of the lines, and so for the log gamma polymer, there is uh, the situation is that there is there is the con there, there is the same there is the same class of symmetric functions that that connects polymer to symmetric functions, and this was explored by Ivan, uh, Neil O'Connell, uh, Timo, and uh, Nico Zigoras, 
and um, this leads to some formulas and structure uh, structure properties of the log gamma polymer and um, and then there are contour integrals for some moments uh, I th I'm, I'm sure yeah I think um, if you take high enough moments then these uh, moments will be uh, infinite because see these these gamma inverse random variables are gamma inverse random variables are pretty uh, are pretty heavy tailed uh, pretty heavy tailed like if t if t goes to infinity then then you get then you get this this behavior so there is there is a power law uh, decay of the pdf as opposed to exponential decay and so if you have a power law decay of the pdf then 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 you you expect that there will be only finitely many moments even for the weight of like one one of the vertices so this is going to be the so this 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 explains that there are only some moments and yet you can still write down the laplace transform conjecturally at least and then you can prove it by um by going uh, by some integrability tricks maybe there is there is a way to get to get to it using using symmetric functions i'm not sure it's written in this uh, in, in these papers by ivan um there is a way to get to fredlon determinant for for this quantity uh using you can compute fredlon determinant at the level of symmetric functions and then you can take all the limits and then you can get of sorry um so it's written somewhere i'm not sure the exact exact reference so somewhere around mcdonald processes and later okay uh so this is the third model um so let's put all of this together and uh and let me let me tell you what's coming next so uh what i discussed is is the is the beta strict weak polymer and uh, and and it limits to the gamma strict weak polymer and then uh, the friend of gamma is the log gamma on uh, log gamma square polymer and so we know that there is there is uh, there is a family of symmetric functions that that uh, powers the polymers at the gamma level and the connection is one of the connections uh, which is the most kind of most algebraic most structural connection is, is given by the geometric uh, version geometric lifting of the robinson shells at knut correspondence and um, so one of the one of the key references here, which contains many other interesting many other interesting things, is the is the paper by Naomi and Yamada uh, in 2004. So this is a, this is a, one of the key references um, on the geometric RSK, and then probabil probabilizing it uh, leads to leads to this connection. Um, all right, and so there are there are other polymers, and there are other symmetric functions. So I'm I'm going to talk about mostly about spin Whittaker functions, which which are lifting, which which lift the GLN Whittaker functions, and introduce and add one extra parameter to them, and then there is there is kind of the lifting of the log gamma polymer leads to this weird beta polymer, which is not even a polymer. It's it's a random recursion, with random recursion with two cases it's it's like it it's weird you'll see it and then then there is one more polymer which i'm going to basically briefly mention right here so there is a, there is one more polymer that is integrable through the coordinate beta ansatz that is known uh for for quite some time it's it's the inverse beta polymer and uh it's it lives on the square lattice and 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 yet and, and it also limits to to the log gamma and the gamma strict weak polymers and uh, and uh, here there are the the, the edges are, are distributed as inverse beta random variable, which is one over beta. So beta belongs from zero to one. Inverse beta belongs from one to infinity. So u is going to be inverse beta, and v, which is the the, the horizontal um, weights, are u minus one, which are from zero to one. So um, there are some parameters. There are there are beta ansatz eigenfunctions. There are moments. Moments are probably because of this unboundedness. Moments probably do not um, determine the distribution. And I'm not sure 
this model has been has been thoroughly studied. And to me, when I'm interested in symmetric functions, this model does not have a connection to symmetric functions that I know of. And uh, probably, well, probably there is there is some there is something to look there. So there is this inverse beta, which I'm mentioning it it lives it lives somewhere in the same in the same region, but it doesn't have a strong connection to symmetric functions, at least at this level. So I'm going to stick to to my to my spin Whitaker and and the other beta polymer. And it would be nice to include this this model in the same formalism, but but so far no. All right, so here's here's this here's this beta polymer. Again, it has it has a Q uh, it has a Q deformation Q lifting, which is called the Q Hantasep or or um, a vertex model powered by the Q hypergeometric function. So there are there are basically equivalent ways of saying what is a Q deformation, and we studied Q deformations with. Um, Ivan Corwin, uh, Kosti Matveev, and uh, uh, later with Matteo um, and Bufetov. So there was there was another paper. So Bufetov, um, Alexei Bufetov, Matve, uh, Mutikorni, and myself, um, 2018. So so there there were some actually 19. Uh, there were some um, developments on the Q level, and then when, as as you take a scaling limit, Q goes to one, then you get, then you get to this. This model, at the polymer level, it looks, it looks nothing like a polymer. So it lives on the square lattice. It has two different, it has two different weights per vertical and horizontal edge, and the weights are random variable and one minus itself. But which random variable you take depends on the relative ordering between these these two between these two um, polymer values, which means that the environment that you that you your polymer lives if you imagine a polymer uh, that is that is going on that is going on and exploring the sorry the polymer is going on and exploring the environment. So the next the next random variable it sees will will depend on not only on the on the polymer partition function, but also on the on the partition function from from here. So, so the edges that that it sees these edges will depend on the values, and so it's not going to be it's not a it's nothing like a polymer model basically, and this this is this is because of this reordering, and then the weights are given by this density. So the weights are all from zero to one, which is good because now now we have some boundedness. Um, and then, uh, well, no, sorry, no, no, no. The weights the weights are not from zero to one. So these guys are um, are the inverse of that. So what am I what am I saying? I'm not not entirely sure. Yeah, well. Me, it doesn't yeah it doesn't have to be it, these these things that do not have to be positive so 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 this is probably what's what's happening here um right so what i'm saying is that well okay so so these weights are one over random variable with this density where where two few two, two f1 is the hypergeometric function and this density comes from sampling a beta distribution where one of the parameters is is a negative binomial so you have rp mn so RPMN are our parameters, and then then you get a continuous random variable. So it's a, like a negative beta binomial, and then you take one over it. So it's it's really really not intuitive to me at least. But as you take s to infinity, so this there is this s parameter which is present at the beta level. As you take it to infinity, you get you get log gamma, and 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 the cases disappear. So so these cases uh, they just disappear. Uh, there is no there, there is no change as s goes to infinity. Uh, both these things converge to the same random variable, so you so you get you get an honest lattice polymer without any cases. And um, so for this for this weird beta polymer, we have we have um, q we have a Laplace transform, we have a q q, q Laplace transform. But uh, so we have a Q Laplace transform, and you can take Q to one to get to get the Laplace transform. It hasn't been done, but 
it can be done. And there are um, right, so there are there are connection to the spin Whitaker polynomial uh, functions with them, which I'm going to discuss. All right, so there is this there is this landscape of polymers that I that I uh, discussed. So these are integrable random polymers. There is this uh, there is this Brownian Brownian O'Connell Yor also. So there is this Brownian polymer. Too bad. Okay, so uh, that's 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 out of the picture. And uh, all these integrable polymers, they, they come as degenerations of some discrete models, basically stochastic vertex models. Okay. So it's a good time to have, uh, to have any questions about, um, about polymers. Do you want to, do you want to know more about integrable directed polymers or did i did i say something wrong i don't know i don't know. so leo so st still the um the inverse beta is not in the picture right yeah i thought about this for several days when preparing for the talk uh, i don't know so probably it could be it could be included i'm not sure it would be nice to include it because it has the coordinate beta on that's um yeah so we we didn't do that yet okay well any more questions when you say included do you mean sort of included in this row with the spin whitaker functions or just yeah. some other somehow connected to some family of symmetric functions so you see, well, the, the scheme of integrability from from like Schur measures, McDonald measures, all of that is that you have a you have a probability ensemble based on symmetric functions, and then a certain marginal of it would be identified with with z, with the polymer partition function. And uh, this marginal of of a, of a high dimensional of like n dimensional distribution. So n dimensional distributions based on symmetric functions, but then the marginal is not is not easy to access. I'll, I'll, I'll show some in the spin Whitaker case. I'll show some how how can you make this connection. Um, so for the inverse beta, well, it's not like you take the measure on spin Whitakers and then you look for natural things, natural marginals, and then you get these two guys. So you get you get these. No, these beta polymers, and then you don't get this one. It would be nice to get inverse beta instead of this one, but it, but it doesn't just work like this. Okay, so let me uh, let me now discuss. Um, Sorry, I just have one one more quick question. Absolutely. Um, so in that diagram that you had, the the two on the right, one in that you label uh, labeled as Roman numeral one and two, those are sort of like initially on a line. But on a, on a sheared domain, right? Right, strict weak. Yeah, they're strict okay. weak domains. Yeah. Okay. Why strict weak? Because I guess. Well, I guess maybe it's tradition. Maybe it's it's like um, if you go further to discrete models, there is there is something that you should. There is something strict weak. Like there is a percolation on strict weak. Lattice, which is kind of easier than, than the square lattice, actually. Well, anyway, e easier in terms of that more cases are integrable on the street weak case on the street weak lattice. So, so let's discuss. Okay, so uh, so spin Whitakers are uh, new functions we discovered with Matteo uh, this year, and they're they're symmetric functions behind beta polymers. And they lift the usual Whitaker functions with with an extra parameter, and and there is a further lifting which which are discrete functions, more 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 familiar from algebraic combinatorics standpoint. Uh, these are spin cube Whitaker polynomials, uh, due to us and earlier due to Borodin and uh, Wheeler, and um, so there are some. Connect, well, the connection to polymers I'm going to explain, definition of these functions I'm going to explain, but there are some open questions to keep in mind, which we also didn't finish 
yet is that there are some properties that that need a proof and uh there is a there is a need for maybe there is there should be some geometric rsk and 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 there is this beta polymer so there are properties yeah so these are these are questions to keep in mind sort of uh while i'm talking about these and um right so so let me uh, let me define them. So uh, symmetric functions are defined usually when you're talking about like McDonald's symmetric functions or sure symmetric polynomials, McDonald's symmetric polynomials. You can define them in two ways. Sometimes, so for sure polynomials, you have a you have a formula or determinable formula, you know, uh, which goes back to I don't know, um, Herman Weil character formula at least. And uh, also you, can, you have a combinatorial definition of sure polynomials as sums over semi-standard tableaus. So this one is, is a combinatorial formula. So this definition is a combinatorial formula where you're defining a function in terms of function of lower order and, and then you're summing over, which now, now here it's an integral. Uh, and then you sum, sum the previous level function multiplied by a function in one variable. And this would be like, like the uh, horizontal strip skew sure polynomial, if you're familiar with sure polynomials. So um, due to historic tradition of Whitaker functions, I'm putting variables here in the X. So these guys are variables. What you usually you what you usually would, would would use for variables in symmetric functions and these are labels l's are labels uh, or single label and uh, the x size are arbitrary they're variables so my function will be symmetric in the x size which is completely not obvious from this definition because here i'm separating one one variable and then integrating and uh the label is ordered and the, and the integration is over interlacing arrays. So the analog function, I'm just going to show you for the sure polynomial. So if I wanna, if I wanna say, what is a sure polynomial? That would be sum over mu, S lambda over mu, Xn, S mu of one, da, 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 X and minus one. So this guy, uh, so this is an side, side remark. Um, this is going to be, uh, so the sum over mu is, is precisely this, this integral, which is an n minus one dimensional. So now uh, what, 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 what remains is to show what this weight is. So this weight is, uh, is a product. So I'm going to show this weight uh, in the case n equal three. So this weight is a product of certain factors corresponding to each. So these are local factors. And there are factors corresponding to each horizontal bond between between the higher level L's. And then there, is, there are these bonds and then there are these bonds and then they're all color coded in this formula. And then there is an overall factor. So X is a single variable here. So there is an overall factor with gammas, overall factor of the power, which, which basically this is a remnant. So this, this thing, this power is a remnant of, 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 of basically saying Xn to the power lambda minus mu. In the sure in the sure case, so this thing um, in the sure case is, is is going to correspond to to this power factor, and then there is a weighting factor which is not present in the sure uh, situation, but it is it is happening um, above, like in the McDonald case. These are non-local products, but in the Collidal or Q Whitaker cases, these are going to be these are going to be local products of na nearest neighbors, and these are going to be um, these are going to be factors like this. And so here I have, I have the variable and, right, okay. Uh, so, so this is an explicit definition. I wanted to show you, show you this. And then um, for the next maybe 10 minutes, I'm going to show you lots of formulas uh, about these spin, spin Whitaker functions because I think they are interesting and um, they should be, studied better from, from the point of view of Whittaker function theory. And Whittaker function theory includes different integral representations, different, uh, different quantum systems for which these guys are eigenvalues, uh, eigenfunctions. And um, uh, 
um, potentially connections to representation theory, number theory, modular forms, all that should be lifted to this extra parameter. And this, this, is, a, this is a work in special functions, which could be enjoyable given, given you know, your taste. So, so for example, um, the simplest possible case include simplest possible case n equal one is just a power function. Uh, n equal two case is already is already a two f one function, uh, which is symmetric in the x y, and you see this this dependence on the x y is symmetric. So the f uh, f to one is defined like like this infinite sum. So f to one is defined like this infinite sum, where here I uh, here I put. Aha. Uh -huh. No, it's not defined like this. Okay, so um, I mean, so I should, yeah, it's not, it's not equal because this gamma factor is different, but okay, anyway. Um, so I'm going to, it, so, so the 2F1 is, is a multiple of, of this sum. So 2F1 is just gamma of C over gamma of A, gamma of B times, times this thing. Um, so basically this is 2F1. It's, it's an, it's an infinite series with, uh, with, gamma functions and then you can divide by the gamma of a to get pohammer symbols um, okay so this is not this is not a definition this is a typo here okay so i'm going to write um, so this this computation uh, relies on 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 one of the many expressions for the 2f1 function so so there is this um, so there is this formula which is correct so so if you take 2f1 then it's basically equal to the integral of the beta fun, uh, the, the usual beta integral where you input an extra factor. So the, in the usual beta integral, you would, you would just have the first two. So, so you have a power and then power of u and power of one minus u. And here you have, here you have an extra term which breaks everything, but then you take, a, then you take expansion, Taylor expansion in z, and then you can write down this, this infinite series. So this is the classical beta integral. Uh, there are other representations for, for 2F1. For example, you can have a million Barnes uh, integral representation where you have an integral in the T variable uh, along, the, uh, along the imaginary axis, or maybe shifted imaginary axis. And uh, um, this, this representation should be actually general. It's a, it's a kind of a dual representation to the, uh, to the to the formula I gave, I gave you initially, where, where you have the integral in the L's. So there should be a dual representation where you, where you kind of integrate in the X's and uh, you peel off one of the L's. And um, I'm looking for this formula now. So here's my, here's my work um, for n equal two, n equal three, n equal four. So n equal four, I'm not going to show you. So n equal three, if you look at this, so I have three, three variables and then um, and then you're integrating in, in like three other variables, but, but the X, Y, Z enter in, in a bunch of gamma factors. So there is a, there is a bunch of gamma factors, which, um, which is here. And then, then the L's enter, enter the formula minimally. So why, why, why am I looking for this? This is because as, uh, in the, in the usual Whitaker level, the, the, there are, there are these, um, there are these formulas, and uh, they they look very nicely, and they allow to study asymptotics of of spin uh, of, of Whittaker functions. They allow to uh, prove many things about them. So um, so these are these were examples and uh, explicit computations. So what can I say uh, more? So there are some properties uh, which we have, and um, some which we conjecture, and all of them come from the Q level, and and the scaling limit as Q goes to one. And then um, at the Q level, there is, a, there is a vertex model. There is an integrable vertex model and the Young-Baxter equation, which proves everything for the Q level. And then when you take Q goes to one, uh, you, get the, you get the properties for the Whittaker, for the Whittaker level, spin Whittaker level. So what are the properties? So first is that it's a, it's a symmetric function in the X variables. Uh, then as s goes to infinity, you get the usual Whittaker functions. And this is a conjecture because we formally prove it, but we don't have tail estimates on integrals. 
like we don't have yeah we don't have decay estimates on integrands so so we cannot use uniformity we we, we prove that integrands converge but we don't have uniformity of the integrals uh, so that's that's that could be fixed by by the by the million barns representations also there are there are eigen operators acting in the x variables and acting in the uh, acting in the x variables and acting in the uh, in the L variables. So for the X variables, we have two eigen operators, uh, which look like McDonald difference operators, except that well, almost like McDonald difference operators, except that the Q shift is, is, is replaced by the arithmetic shift, which is expected. Um, and then, then this stuff is basically almost like McDonald operator. And so what we have is that, is that the Fs are eigenfunctions and the eigenvalues are L's, either the smallest L or, or the, the L with the largest index. So um, as compared to McDonald level, here we have two operators, and the McDonald level we have n operators. So and n is bigger than two, and uh, this is lacking here so far. And uh, if you have if you if you want to act in the other variables in the in the L variables. First, you need to make change of variables so that now, now you're acting in the, in the kind of log of L's. So you need to take the difference operators in the log, log L's up to, up to some shifts. And um, then you can define the second order different, uh, differential operator, which we call the uh, deformed quantum Toda operator. Because as S goes to infinity, what you see here is that S enters in a very in a very controlled way, and uh, here I'm summing over all possible i and j. And if S is going to infinity, then the balance of powers makes i and j be nearest neighbors. And so, as S goes to infinity, you immediately get immediately get um, nearest neighbor summation. So, uh, in the language of root systems, this might hopefully be the sum over all uh, positive roots, and this is a sum over all simple roots. So, so the simple root interpretation works because the quantum Toda Hamiltonian for for Whittaker functions works for other types. And then, uh, hopefully, if you if you make it, if you make functions, then then the Hamiltonians would be would be summing over all positive roots, and not only not only simple roots. And uh, and so this H acting on the L variables log log of L variables uh, is going to be diagonal in the in the Whittaker in the spin Whittaker functions. Okay, uh, so number five is that there is some conjecture orthogonality which I don't know, still don't have any progress on, but um, um, maybe for n equal two that can be that can be explicit because these are two f ones there are integral representations maybe interchanging variables, interchanging integrals, this, this, can be, this can be proven. All right, so too many, too many formulas. So let me, um, so Andrew, I'm going to be done in 10 minutes, okay? So I'm, I'm not going to be, so I'm going to just take an hour, um, not, not one and a half hours. Um, so the last piece is the connection between the two. Um, so what we defined is, 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 the, is the F, x1 up to xn of ln one so these are these are ordered uh, and these are these are big greater than one and these are like lifts with one parameter of this of the Whittaker functions and Whittaker functions um, are very they look pretty similar except that the the stuff you put here, the label is not ordered. The, the label is actually going to be arbitrary um, inside the arbitrary reals. So there is no ordering here. And uh, it's a surprise. It's surprising that that you can lift that uh, structure to the to the uh, add one more parameters to one more parameter to something um, well studied. So um, let me connect polymers to these functions. So there are two, two ways to connect. 
One is a, right? So there are three ways to connect, but the third way doesn't work so far. So, so, so there could be, I mean, it doesn't work for the beta polymers, but it works for the gamma polymers. So for the gamma polymers, there is a robin success of Knut analog, which connects polymers to symmetric functions. And this is a, this is a general story and it works the same way uh, in connection with last passage percolation and sure functions and sure measures or TASEP and sure measures or uh, right and then longest increasing subsequences and sure measures so this is this is a very uh, so the non-geometric RSK a very very non known tool uh, in this business so so we don't have it for beta yet uh, what we have is the, we have two two ways to connect. So one one is uh, go to the Q level, construct a coupling. So a coupling is is a weaker version of the RSK where you have an identity in distribution. You prove the same identity in distribution as as you would with the RSK, but you don't have um, you don't have kind of you don't have bijection. You don't have bijection uh, between some things like the RSK correspondence. So these are these are weaker substitutes for RSK that we have at Q level, and I don't expect there there would be a RSK at the Q level, but there could be there could be a bijection at 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 the Whitaker level because it's continuous, so it could be a bijection. And then so so you take a coupling and then you take a scaling limit. Uh, I'm not going to explain that. Uh, I'm not going to explain the second one, but but the second one is easier to believe, because now what we have is that is that um, I, I I told you that there are there are contour integrals for moments of polymers, and you can also use these uh, difference operators, and act by difference operators on the Cauchy identity for the for the spin Whitaker functions, to obtain contour integral formulas for for the marginal distribution of, of these like L1, L1 and Ln inverse. So these are going to be, uh, you, can, you can obtain, you know, contour integral formulas involving these. So, uh, so observables, what, by observables, I mean something like expectation of Ln to the, to the power minus K is equal to a contour integral, that is a K-fold contour integrals. Um, so you can, you can write down expectations for Whitaker measures because we have operators. And you can write them in a quantum integral form because the operators look like uh, look like residue expansions. And you can you can use this fact to pack the operator action in a quantum integral form. And that, then then it means that you can connect measure to polymers. So this is this is easy to believe. Uh, this doesn't work exactly for for the weird polymer because it has infinite moments. But for the strict weak beta polymer, the first I started with, it works well because their mo moments determine the distribution. So there is a, there is a Cauchy identity. So for the Cauchy identity, I have um, I have the integration over. So remember what Cauchy identity in the usual in the usual sure case was. So you take a sum of lambda, sum over lambda is lambda of x, s lambda of y equals some product. And uh, so you're summing over lambda in the Whitaker level, it's replaced by the integral over L's. And then here is my function f. Here is a kind of a dual Whitaker, dual spin Whitaker function g, which, uh, which is a, another kind of combinatorial formula. Um, so there is, a, there is a combinatorial formula for, for, for the g. Um, function, which is pretty similar. Um, and then you get a product formula on the right. As you take S go, so S parameter enters in a kind of a balanced way. As you take S to infinity, you can recover the integral identities for Whitaker functions due to bump state, um, bump and state, and later Corwin and um, O'Connell, Cipollini, and Ziggurat. So there are these identities uh, that you can recover. Uh, okay. So um, 
graphically in the combinatorial formula level, this looks like, so, so the Cauchy identity looks like basically integration over Ls, but then F itself is an integration over an interlacing array here and G is going to be an integration over, over an interlacing array of, of, a, of a kind of a trapezoidal shape. And uh, I'm going to define the spin Whittaker measure by saying that, well, I, I take this stuff, the product of F times G, depending on L, and then I divide it by the normalizing constant. So it's the normalizing constant is positive if S and X and Y are all um, positive, positive reals with, with some other restrictions. But this is going to be a positive thing. And the functions are going to be positive because what I'm integrating is going to be positive, like each, each term. So it's, it's easy to see that everything's positive. So you can define a probability measure, uh, which, is, which is a new probability measure on antiples, like ordered antiples of reals. And uh, you can also go further and define the process, which means, which means uh, basically looking at the joint distribution of everything here where you weight what's going on inside by by the um by the product of individual factors so these are like skew functions and uh the z is the same so here z in the measure and the process are the same things all right cool um so the final slide is uh is the connection between polymers and spin whittakers so i'm going to show the full okay uh so take a measure so remember that polymers i defined already with multiple parameters xi and yj so take them take um fix uh, k or n sorry uh let me do some editing because this is not correct so there should be n's here so i'm going to put n and here and here and here and here. And then I'm going to put in, in the indices. Uh, there we go. Right, so, um, so you take n, then you take uh, joint distribution of these guys for all possible n's. And uh, the measure is depending on x1 up to xn. And then M is fixed and it's it's in the G factor. So so the measure is proportional to F of X1 da 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 Xn uh, of L times G Y1 da 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 Ym of L. And L is an n tuple of integers. And then I take the joint distribution. You can construct using process, you can construct joint distribution of these things of Ls for all possible n when you change n. And and this 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 leads to an interlacing array. Uh, this leads to an interlacing array, which is random, and uh, you, can, you can cut it at some level n. So it's going to be a finite interlacing array of reals, and uh, the interlacing conditions are like that. And then you take the, then you take the marginal marginal distributions along two diagonals. So if you take if you take the vertical diagonal, uh, and uh, you take you take you know, L, 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 N, N, and then you take one over that, you will get, you will get a, so remember that L, uh, L itself is bigger than one. L itself is bigger than one. So you take one over, you get something between zero and one, which, which are going to be the partition functions of the beta strict tweak. And if you take this diagonal, then you get the other weird beta polymer. So M is fixed. Uh, n is a joint distribution. All right, so there is this connection, which is which is the same as everywhere in in every connection between symmetric functions and and stochastic systems, um, well, except random matrices. Random matrices are a little different, but if you take like particle systems and symmetric functions, then these are going to be all these connections. They look like this. So you take a measure of interlacing arrays. Maybe in the in the Whitaker case they're not even interlacing, but uh, here you take interlacing arrays and and then you look at the diagonals and their distributions are polymers. So, okay, so here is the yeah here 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 is a scheme I I just copied from from a paper, a scheme of like all the different symmetric functions, and uh, and 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 the stochastic systems behind them. 
like particle systems behind, behind them. Um, and there are lots of questions that I discussed already, so uh, I'm just going to uh, stop here. Uh, well, the final thing I'd like to say that if, if, you, if you want to think about any of these questions, uh, please let me know, because I, I also have some ideas maybe about how to approach some of these questions in, in the spin Whitaker world. Okay, thank you very much. Let's all thank Leo. Uh, any questions? So Leo, so um, at some point, uh, maybe we talked about this. Yeah, I think you were visiting Columbia, but um, so if you, if you look at the vertex models and you do this sort of, um, so if you have a horizontal spin J and then you yeah. subtract J from all of the spin variables in the horizontal, you get a pushing model from, from the kind of higher spin vertex models. And then we, we, and it has the duality, which is kind of like the pushing duality we, we discovered a while ago for push um, ASAP. And then at some point we were trying to analytically continue the formulas and get what, and, and it, to me, it seems like this is what should give us the inverse beta polymer fitting. Right. You know, the, the, the type of models you get on the two different sides, are, are they somehow related by this or, or do you think it's a different relationship? I didn't check, but but you you, you get the spin with the spin Q with the curve, you know, vertex model um, by doing precisely the same thing. You you reverse the arrows, meaning subtract J, uh, reverse the arrows and uh, do the fusion, and then you do analytic continuation, and then you specialize. It's the same procedure, and I'm sure that I mean not sure, but okay, maybe we so we didn't finish the computation, and maybe in the computation we didn't we. We should have gotten inverse beta, but you, we also could have gotten this weird beta. Uh -huh. And you never know once and, until you finish the computation. Uh, so, well, because this weird beta was, was computed by, by Kosti Matveev um, initially as a limit of the, of the QCon push. But right, right, the picture is not is not complete because there is this inverse beta. So it should be somewhere. Um, do you think you can expand on the fifth bullet there? So are you talking about, when you say multi-layer beta polymers, are you referring to like multi-layer inverse beta? So uh, what? Multi-layer. What does it mean multi-layer? So in the so so in the gamma world, it means that um, so you take you take this uh, so in the gamma world, you have the interlacing arrays like this, you know, and uh, and so if you look at here, you have the uh, log down one, and if you look at the joint distribution of two layers, then you would get you would get it's it's very simple. It's directed polymers. It's like multiple directed polymers, where where you're taking uh, where you're taking partition functions from two points to two points, and then the polymer paths must must not be intersecting. Mm -hmm. So that kind of stuff. So I would like to extend this to beta, but haven't been done yet. Okay. So so you you know what you're looking for, but it's just. Not it's clear not, how to get there. It, it's okay. not done. Like, like how basically the question is: Look at this. Look at the spin Whitaker. Take two diagonals and describe them in a particle system language, polymer language, whatever. Maybe here because this one is 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 complicated. Maybe here. Okay. So strict weak has has identical interpretation mm -hmm. with multiple polymers, non intersecting, strict weak, everything. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank Leo again. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting.